Hey everybody, uh, it's Romaine Johnson. We just wanted to share something with you. So, you know, one of the things that I do is take care of kids who have subglottic stenosis, tracheal stenosis, laryngeal stenosis. Stenosis is just scar tissue and it forms in the airway, larynx, trachea, subglottis. And I see quite a few patients with that disorder. And I wanted to share with you a case kind of from beginning to end or relative end, it doesn't technically end uh, because even long-term, after you think a problem is fixed, they could potentially come back years later with increased symptoms. But at least for the course of say six months, I saw a child who had an injury, developed severe stenosis, I surgically corrected it, and then I wanted to show you what the final result was or the semi-final result was. All right, so flash. This kid got intubated after a car accident, loss of consciousness, so, severe subglottic injury. You can see the mucosa is denuded. That's the cartilage there sticking out. There's a huge gap between the cartilage and the normal trachea. And so when you see that kind of injury, you gotta follow the child or the adult over time. And so these videos are pretty fast. I speeded them up just so we could move along, but I started following it over the course of several weeks, several months to see if things would get worse. I tried to intervene when I could, but just over time, she became more and more symptomatic. She developed a mature subglottic stenosis. Eventually it became like a grade three stenosis, despite some dilations, despite some uh, application of mitomycin C. Here's a 2.5 in your tracheal tube inserted and you can see there's no leak. So in effect, this child had a grade three stenosis. She was about six, she was about seven or eight years old if I remember correctly. And so I took a, after several months I said, well, you know, let's, let's do a reconstructive surgery as opposed to a tracheostomy. So this is one week after her reconstructive surgery, and it's looking, you know, a little bit scary, you know, lots of granulation tissue. We did an anterior posterior rib graft. And so, but you gotta follow these things over time. And so I, we saw her back another week and things are mucosalizing. She is developing a little bit of lateral scar bands, but at this instance, she just keep following them. Symptomatically, she seems like she's getting a little bit better. I did do a couple of dilations after the reconstructive surgery. I may have used mitomycin C once or twice as well, but uh, just keep following them. Maybe bring them back every couple of weeks to check and ask the mo or check the graft, make sure it's healing properly, do any touch up work, apply a little medicine, do a little dilation. And then just slowly over time, just keep looking at it. And then you'll see over time it starts to heal. She actually is much more, uh, or probably she's much less symptomatic. She feels better. She's able to walk around. She's eating back to a normal diet. She's sleeping better. Uh, the one thing that we never got was a good voice. And you can see why her voice wouldn't be perfect. She's got this subglottic uh, abnormality, which affects airflow. And so she's still hoarse, but she is breathing much better, um, doing great in that sense. And it's been about a year now since her surgery. I think the last DLB was about six months after her procedure, which is coming up. Again, starting to open up. And that's what you'll see. Things will slowly open up over time uh, if you can get the wound to stabilize. And so this now is a normal size tube for her age. I believe it was about a four, or about a five. And if you look closely, you can see little bubbles coming out, which suggests that she leaks around that tube. So her airway was about 6.2 millimeters in diameter. So just quick take home, subglottic stenosis after intubation, um, mostly due to intubation injuries. ED tubes cause trauma, impede blow flow to tissue causing injury. That's the hallmark of the process. And basically you gotta perform airway airway evaluation if you think a kid's got stenosis. And if they got stenosis, you gotta treat it. Dilation, tracheostomy, reconstruction. I chose reconstruction in this instance. I think it worked well for her, but you could choose something else. Okay guys, hope you're doing great.